What's up guys, it's Lee here from Bleeped Up Productions and today it is a Coventry FIFA episode but I'm recording this on the day, uh, one of the most famous and favourite days of the Barclays Premier League in my personal opinion, transfer deadline day and we have some shocking news, there's two pieces, one's, one's I don't really care about but one I really do. So the first one is obviously Leon Clark. If you're a big Coventry fan like me, our top goal scorer has decided to bugger off back to Wolverhampton for a fee of £750,000. That's pretty cool. We get some money. Hopefully we can get a better striker than him. But yeah, Leon Clark's gone, so um, I'm worried about how we're going to score goals this season in real life. But the saddest part... Of transfer deadline day. If you know me personally, one of my favourite players in the Premier League, Johan Kabay of Newcastle, has gone to Paris Saint-Germain. I think that's an amazing move for him. Paris Saint-Germain are an amazing team. But the Premier League have lost a world-class player. And I am really, really upset about that. And uh, yeah, I was actually going to buy a Newcastle shirt at the beginning of this season with Johan Kabay on the back. So I'm kind of happy that I didn't now. But anyway, goodbye, Johan wish you all the best in possibly the worst league in the world anyway moving on guys i want to thank you for all your support on these uh, past episodes if this is the first time you're actually watching this episode why don't you click the thumbnail on the screen that will take you to the playlist so you can watch it from episode one but anyway moving on with today's episode fighting for pride Episode 4, we are against Liverpool, and I can tell you now guys, Liverpool are a very strong squad. So in the press conference, I decided to motivate our boys, because we needed it. And this is game 10, already in the Barclays Premier League for us, and we are against Liverpool. Like I was saying, Liverpool have a really good squad. They have Luis Suarez, Daniel Sturridge, you know, scary, scary players, Coutinho, yeah? And we are away at Anfield. Ugh. I can tell you now, I was a bit nervous coming into this game. Even though, you know, we have EB, the youngster from Liverpool, making his debut against his former club. But look at that for a signing. <laughs> Liverpool have signed Ben Zima. What the heck? Anyway, moving on, we're going to pick up the action at 9-11. Oh, awkward. Anyway, um... <laughs> Kelly drives it in and Benzema here picks up at the outside of the box, has a shot, but our keeper is equal to it and runs and grabs the loose ball. Luckily enough, Benzema is going to be quite a man to handle today. But anyway, Musa picks up the ball here and has a shot and it is deflected, I believe, off Skirtle. And Ebi has a shot and somehow uh, Mignolet decides to do some acrobatic save to stop it and Liverpool clear. Uh, moving on with more action, we have Kelly here picking it up, and Henderson finds Benzema again on the wing, and as you can see, Benzema is just going to do a little bit of trickery. My defenders can't seem to tackle him and leave a wide open spot, but we finally get the ball away. Thank goodness for that. And we'll pick up the action here, guys, and Eby does a fantastic through ball to Baker. I was playing a couple of other players because they were a little bit tired, and Baker stops play here. Uh, passes it to EB, EB swivels, passes it to Barton, and Barton's shot is just wide. It hits the microphone at the back of the goal to the side, and it is nil-nil at half-time. Going into this, guys, I was happy. If I get a point, I'm happy. That's all I was thinking at this time. So we'll watch it straight from the kickoff, and Liverpool uh, pass it back to Lucas, but Lucas loses it to EB, and EB is just going to turn on the Jets. As you can see, Musa. Passes it to Marcus Lopez. Bang. What a goal on the 47th minute. Evie drew the defenders away, but Lopez just oh, filled in that hole and bobs your uncle. We are 1-0 up against Liverpool. Oh, fantastic through ball there by Frank Musa, and what a finish by Lopez. He's been a classic signing. But look at this. Luka Modric as well. Liverpool in real life, and they've got Danny as well. Look, Dan they bring on Danny as well. Liverpool have a phenomenal squad. But anyway, we'll pick it up here. And Frank Musa has a shot and Mignolet is equal to the challenge. So in three years, Liverpool have bought some world-class players. But as you can see, we bought on some players because our team was actually tied. And as you can see, we get a bit of cheese and Suso is through. 
but Webster there blocks it and we clear. Thank goodness for that. But we have a corner on the 90th minute. It is whipped in and Skirtle's there, but it's an acrobatic finish to clear away. And then Modric has a shot which is miles wide and he is furious. And that is how the game ends, guys. We take a 1-0 win against Liverpool. It was very finger-biting towards the second half, but we'll take the win nonetheless. And our second game is against Chelsea. Another big team in this episode, and I decide to motivate the boys because they need it. And it is game 11 in the Barclays Premier League, and it's against Chelsea. And we've seen Chelsea already uh, in this um, season. And I can tell you, they're, they're, they're a scary squad. In the transfer deadline window, they're signing everyone, just like Man City. But they played an actual weak-ish side against us. I don't know why this happens all the time, but it just seems to happen in FIFA quite a bit when you are a low-ranking squad. And as you can see, we are second in the Barclays Premier League, and Chelsea are fifth. So here we go, we'll pick up the action here, and Moussa, uh, not Moussa, sorry, Moses passes it to uh, De Bruyne here, and De Bruyne passes it to Manzic, I think that's the guy, Manzukic? Yeah, Manzukic from Bayern Munich, he used to play there, but obviously Chelsea bought him, and he has a shot and it just goes wide, lucky enough, and we'll pick up the action again, and Ramirez loses possession here, and Christie passes it to Moussa, and Moussa is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and the keeper does a fantastic save i believe that they brought back that uh, keeper from atletico madrid i think it's Coutures or whatever his name is but from the throw in fleck finds musa and musa does louise but musa can't find the back of the net and on the replay it is just millimeters wide look how this he does the player and uh, just misses couldn't even hit the post but here we go, we've got Chelsea again on the attack, and Moses finds Mandzukic, and Mandzukic finds De Bruyne, and he is going to rocket one into the bottom corner, and on the 18th minute, guys, we are 1-0 down against Chelsea. Scary times in D, but here we go, we have the replay, and he just volleys it into the back of the net, and Mandzukic again plays in De Bruyne, but De Bruyne does some sort of back kind of turn for some weird reason, which helps us out and we get the ball back. But here we go, we get an opportunity on the 32nd minute and Lopez finds Fleck, Fleck to Musa, Musa to Fleck again and Fleck has a shot but it is saved by the Chelsea keeper once more. And here on the 37th minute we'll pick up the action here and Fleck has it and it's a through ball to Musa again and Musa has a shot and it hits the outside of the post. That was a perfect opportunity to equalize and Musa straight off and bang, straight off the post, unfortunate. But we go into half time, one nil down. And I don't expect us to win because Chelsea have a really good game, but we're, go we're gonna try, we're gonna try. We shouldn't be beating the big teams, but somehow our team spirit is phenomenal. And Gold here finds EB and EB finds Musa and Musa to Gold and Gold, bang, puts it in the back of the net. And obviously with this celebration, as you can see guys, he starts mocking the players he's probably mocking me because i probably chewed them a new one in the dressing room uh to say guys get your fingers out we need a score and gold does and he's been playing phenomenal uh for us this season and he finds the bottom corner and we'll pick up the action here and lopez does a fantastic ball to gold again and gold is just going to drive wide here cuts inside and has a shot and the keeper is equal to the save again chelsea's keeper are keeping it's in it, no pun intended, with that saying there, and it goes for a free kick. But here you go, look, Evan Hazard comes on for Victor Moses, and Hazard in real life is a phenomenal player, and he is scary good in FIFA. And as you can see, Willian here has the ball, but Christie takes it away from him and does a terrible pass. It goes straight to Van Holden, and boom. The substitute, Evan Hazard, comes on and scores a header in the 72nd minute. I think he outjumps Webster for this ball, but what a cracking header this is on the replay, I kid you not. And uh, Chelsea are pretty excited because they were losing 2-1. Well, no, they were drawing, sorry, 1-1. But what a fantastic header that is. Yeah, he jumps in front of Webster. And we are 2-1 down, guys. And here again, does Boyne again is just tearing through our midfield. And Mikel here has a cross, and it goes straight to Ramirez, but our keeper is equal to that effort. But unfortunately, we lose this game 2-1 to Chelsea. Uh, our keeper looks absolutely devastated, but you're against Chelsea. I, I, I'm happy to take a point, but yes. And there he is, Couturier, uh, the goalie for 
Chelsea. But our third game is against Manchester United. So you know what? I'm motivated the guys again. And gosh, we definitely needed motivation after those two hard games that we fought. So uh, the media <laughs> decided to compliment me on what I said. And what I said in the press conference was, in an effort to get this club up for their big top of the table match, McAlpin said nothing but the right things before the Coventry uh, City and Manchester United clash. We're playing in this to win and we all expect to win because we're winners. We will come out running hard against Manchester United and I hope David Moyes has prepared his squad for this match because we will be. I love how we call ourselves winners. We're just going to quote Charlie Sheen there, which is pretty funny. But anyway, we're going to move straight into game 12. And game 12 is against Manchester United. And David Moyes is Manchester United. And coming into this game, just like I said, this episode is brutal. We've, we've played Liverpool and got a win. We lost against Chelsea. Now we have Manchester United. Man, we're playing all the hard teams. But we knew this was going to come. So this is kind of like a reality check episode but as you can see there's a few players warming up and we are ready to kick off here at Old Trafford and in the second minute no joke Valencia here does a great through ball to Jones and Jones crosses it in here and Boateng's uh, actually that's Kevin Prince Boateng uh, header gets blocked but also we block a shot by Valencia as well and we clear but here we go from a throw in gold is straight to it passes it to EB and EB finds the bottom corner on the 10th minute i don't know it's something about these throw-ins the def the players just seem to throw it and if you get in you can easily take the ball and score a goal and look at that gold lightning quick through ball to eb and eb takes no no chances and just hits it first time and has a cracking goal and here he goes again has a shot and it gets blocked this time by the defender and it goes out for a corner and from the following corner gold is going to take it it is not properly cleared by manchester united and Fletcher finally <laughs> brings it under control, but Barton tackles him and he goes nowhere. So we'll pick up the action again here, and Jones again causing us problems here on this side. And Valencia does, uh, <laughs> I think that's Adams, he does Adams like no man's business, crosses it, and what a defensive block by Clark. Boateng had an uh, effort, but it came off Clark's head, and they get a corner. And from the following corner, it is whipped in and Somehow Boateng gets it but doesn't decide to shoot so Barton dispossesses him and it goes out for another corner which goes to nothing. So here we go, we'll pick it up, it's stoppage, uh, extra time sorry, or stoppage time in the uh, second half. Gold is unleashed and here we go, Mar uh, Marcos Lopez is not tall enough to get his head on that but they do not clear it and it comes to EB, EB, still EB, he has a shot and Manchester United eventually get it cleared and that is going to take us all the way to half time so we are 1-0 up at half time at Old Trafford what a victory this could be for us and you know coming into the second half we were buzzing and as you can see here Musa gets dispossessed but Gold look at that he's just a workhorse wins it back for us and Fleck does a fantastic line ball to Christie here and Christie does a nice little cut and he crosses it and it goes to EB and EB's header is straight at De Gea but it isn't cleared properly and Marcos Lopez here is just going to take his time has a shot but it is deflected and it goes straight to De Gea and Manchester United bring on Robin Van Persie I don't know why he didn't start the game but anyway we'll pick up the action here and Nani actually dispossesses it and passes it through to Boateng and yes Prince Boateng Kevin Prince Boateng I think that's how you pronounce his name is tackled and yeah he is excited that he scored and he gets tackled there by Fabio right at the end it looks like he's going to get impaled on a camera which is quite comical which we'll get back to uh, in a second and yeah look the, the Fabio tackle look at that he's going to land on those uh, press people and probably kill Botang and injure him in the process but anyway moving on uh, we have a great free ball here by Evie to unleash Barton and Barton crosses it and Musa is there, the top goal scorer for us in the league so far. Uh, Frank Musa finds the back of the net on the 67th minute. I don't know what the Man United defence was doing. Like they just turned off and Musa somehow got ahead of them. But as you can see, Lopez got a little bit injured and tired during this game. So I had to bring on Thomas to make sure that he was okay. And Valencia actually fakes this and it goes straight to the keeper. Unfortunate for Manchester United in that free kick. So 
We'll pick up the action again, and Thomas, who's just come on, is through on goal. He goes flying past Vidic, and he has a shot, and it is just wide, and he is so unfortunate, but he's really angry with that effort, and if you look this, that is literally just swerving a little bit. This is the best angle. Yeah, just wide, literally a hair wide of going in and giving us a uh, two-goal cushion. But here we are on the 90th minute. Jones, again, causing us problems, crosses it, and look at that shot. It is blocked. And we clear. And it's still not away. And Van Persie here is given room to shoot. And look at that. Aduga, our goalkeeper, coming up big. And on this replay, look at this. He gets a shot through two defenders. Bang. Look at that. And what a save. Barkeeper just palming it away like it was nothing. But here we go. From the corner, Manchester United to get an equaliser. Valencia crosses it in. It is headed wide. And that is going to do it. We get a 2-1 win against Manchester United. It was an absolute uphill battle for half the game. But we'll take three points away to Manchester United. And Fabio is absolutely gutted. But as you can see, not good news for us. We have an injury. And Blair Adams, our left back, has suffered a torn hamstring and will be out for three months. That is absolutely brutal, a torn hamstring. And he's going to get replaced with old man Muck Sheffrey. Yes, he's a left midfielder, but... If you can see the stats there, they even out a little bit. So he's going to replace him. And we'll go into the final game of this episode, guys. And it was against Everton. So I wanted to motivate the boys even more. So this is game 13, the final game uh, of this episode. And we're against Everton. Now, Everton, in real life, have a phenomenal squad. They are really doing well under Roberto Martinez. But in this career mode, they're doing okay-ish. They're mid-table at the moment. And uh, we are kind of in the top part of the table so we should get a win here or maybe even a point I'll be happy with a draw or a win and Barton there has been playing really well for us recently but anyway in the f pretty much in the first uh, couple of minutes they get a chance here and Barkley does a fantastic bit of skill there and our keeper <sighs> might not say that so I'm glad that Webster came across to stop it and they get a corner so Morales actually takes it and it is headed and our keeper again and goodness gracious we can't seem to clear it but then Phil Jagielka tackles and it goes out our keeper is saving our guts here but here we go Marcos Lopez is through the keeper comes out and heads it and then look at this Frank Musa has an effort and what a save by the keeper of <laughs> Everton I don't know who's in goal but look at that he heads it straight to a defender but Frank Musa has a shot that's going in and somehow the keeper gets back in time and has a phenomenal save which is unbelievable but here we go and Zongzi uh, passes it to Barkley and Barkley's through on the keeper again but our keeper is out as quickly as possible and here we go Lopez gets it back somehow and EB is through and he has a shot but it goes for a free kick now if you watch this sometimes the animations get stuck and he's through one on one with the keeper he's going to kick it as you can see he was going to shoot that goal shoot the ball at the goal sorry and somehow the player got in the way and it's a foul but here we go we'll <laughs> pass it again and Fleck passes it to Eby, and his shot is saved again by the keeper. And as you can see, what a great through ball this is. There it is by John Fleck. And Eby, first time straight at the keeper, could have aimed for the corner. But we go into half time, nil nil, and I'm happy with that because Everton are a very, very good squad. And you know what? We came out firing in the first, in the second half, guys. And here we go. We got Musa. It passes it to Eby, and Eby's shot is blocked. And you know what? It just kept coming. And from the corner, this is what happened. As you can see, our player just misses it. And Gold here is just going to hold it up a little bit. He's just going to keep holding it up. He passes it out wide. He gets actually dispossessed there. And John Fleck gets it. Eby gets it. But he finds Frank Musa on the wing. And Frank Musa does what he does best recently, finding the back of the net on the 53rd minute. And that's his ninth goal in the Premier League. And he is celebrating it. And I can tell you now, Frank Musa has been on fire for us. And I do feel sorry because one of the Evertonian players is down injured. But we'll take the goal. I'm not going to complain. And here we go. We've got Onzongi again. Passes it to Barkley. And Barkley does a clever little turn to Jalovic. And Jalovic passes it to Gibson. And Gibson passes it to Barkley. And Barkley's been all over us. And he somehow gets the ball back here. Does a cross. And Gibson headers it in on the 64th minute our defending just turned off for a split second and we pay the price with a goal against us and it was a free header as you can see our defender is caught in no man's land 
and Gibson takes that free header and puts it in the back of the net. So, can we reply right off the bat? No, we can't, but we can reply with a crazy as tackle by Christie. And I honestly thought this was going to be a red card, but that is only a yellow. Uh, I don't know how that's only a yellow. When you watch the replay, look at this. Bang! <laughs> the player goes flying, and that's only a yellow card somehow. But anyway, we pick up the action here, and McSheffrey is trying to tackle Morales, and Morales does a beautiful through ball to Fellaini, and Fellaini has a cross, but it is cleared by Clark, and then Nzongzi has a shot, which is, yeah, that's going nowhere near the goal. But we'll pick up the action again and on the 82nd minute. Look at that. John Fleck is through. He is through. He crosses it, and Musa is unfortunately out of range with his head, and then Barton picks it up here, does a horrible touch. It comes off his bum and Everton get the clearance and that's actually how the game is going to finish guys it finished 1-1 we get a draw we get a point against Everton which is pretty good I wanted to win but they played really well their defense held us back and as you can see in the Premier League at the moment Man City are a top Man United a second we are now third Chelsea are fourth Newcastle a fifth Spurs Everton Fulham Liverpool Stoke Arsenal are still in 11th I don't know what's going on with Arsenal Aston Villa Sunderland Wigan West Ham West Brom, Southampton, uh, Hull City, Norwich, and look at that, Swansea still bottom of the Premier League. What is going on? But as you can see, we're still in the hunt for everything, but the two teams that shock me the most are Swansea and Arsenal. Where, what, what is going on with those two teams this season? But as you can see, here we go, we've got the Barclays Premier League stats. There it is, Musa at the top with nine, Van Persie with eight, Falcao with seven, and Sinclair with seven, and Janovic with seven. So we're up there. Frank Musa is beating Robin Van Persie. Only in FIFA is that possible. And as you can see, we're going to assists, and it's gold with six, Musa with five, uh, Kabul with, for Tottenham with five, and Young with four, and also Sissoko with four. And then, as you can see, clean sheets, De Gea is up there with eight, Followed by Hart with six. Uh, Seguru, who's probably the keeper we played against just in Everton, was six. Then followed by Quill, and then followed by Carson, who is for Wigan. But here we go. We wanted to do a squad report. And as you can see, our keeper, Adua, is playing a rating at 67 at the moment. Uh, Christie is at 75. He's got a plus two. Webster's gone down one, but that's because he's getting on a bit, I think. Uh, then it's Jordan Clark. He's playing at 71. And then it's Old Man McSheffrey at 61, staying neutral. Uh, Ryan Gold there, look at that, playing at 69. <laughs> yeah, not going to make any jokes. Uh, John Fleck there at 75. Then uh, Lopez at 73. Um, Barton also at 73. And as you can see, the stats for all these guys have been increasing. And look, EB is at 68 with a lot of pluses and going up. And there's Frank Musa, he's playing at 73. Uh, Baker's gone down one, but that's because he's going to retire at the end of this season and he's old. Stefla, I haven't even used yet, but he's a 17-year-old striker I have. Garner, I haven't really used, but he's gone up by one, so he's at 61. Uh, Daniels is on 62, and I haven't really used him as well. Uh, Thomas has come on and off the field, and he's still at 63. Uh, backup keeper, Emery, is... Yeah, 67. Leon Clark, the traitor. Sorry, <laughs> still uh, bitter about the transfer deadline. He is at uh, 67 now because he's getting on a bit. Uh, Al Shawaran, or however you pronounce it, is at 57. I haven't played with him much. Uh, Blair Adams, who's injured, is playing at 70. And our backup keeper, McGovern, is at 61. And that's all we have time for this episode, guys. So... If you're new to this channel and you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and why not subscribe? You can click that subscribe uh, button there. That will be much appreciated. You can also click uh, the button below it, which it will take you to my channel so you can see all the other content I do. Uh, on the screen as well, you can go back and watch last week's episode. And if you're watching this and you know the episode's out, you can click on the next episode to take you to the next one. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, so find us up on that, guys. Until next week then, guys, take care, have a good one, and yeah, I'll see how we do uh, in the next episode.